Greetings, I'm Barrent and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today we're going to be doing a Kickstarter preview of a game called Cora Quest. Now this game was created by the daughter and father, Dan and Cora Hughes. I'm really excited to bring this game to you. It's a dungeon crawler that has an absolutely unique experience that I'm excited to show you. Now this game of course has been created by both the daughter Cora and the father and all the artwork is done by kids, which is what really stands out as a unique feature in this game. I'm really excited how the art works and of course the mechanics in this game are really cool too. I'm excited to show you what is coming inside this game. Also, some of the things that are really neat about this game is as this game goes through Kickstarter and gets produced, they're going to create like web apps and even Facebook groups that can create content for this game. You can create your own characters. You can create your own monsters. You can create your own dungeons. It's really cool. They lay this perfect foundation for you to be able to have your own story built inside the game Korra Quest. Of course, they have their own story. Story, and we're going to be running through that story today on this playthrough. But I do want you to know that this game is super exciting because you can expand it. And oh, I'm just excited to show this to you. Now, I am going to be playing this game with my son. He is also going to be joining me in this game while we play it. So let's go ahead, get the game set up, show you our characters, and then let's begin our quest inside Core Quest. If you're excited to see how Core Quest plays and what's in store for our characters, then I need you to meet me at the table. The first thing you're going to do is go ahead and grab a party of four characters. Now you can, like I said, make your own characters or you can use the pre-made ones that they provide. We're using the pre-made characters. We're going to be using the dwarf, the wizard woman, and then my son Ridley is going to run the crossbow dude and the halfling. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at what is on these cards. First, it's got 10 health for our dwarf. He moves three spaces and he's using an axe. The character itself gets to roll a red damage die when attacking and every character comes with a special power. He's allowed to move and attack for one action. You'll see how that works during the playthrough. Of course, his weapon here is his axe, and he gets to roll one white die, and this is the range on it, so it has to be right next to the character in order to attack with it. Also, it is worth one gold. The next character we have is our wizard woman. She has eight health, four movement. She is the wand, again, has a red die, and she also has a power that says one hit damages two adjacent enemies equally. This is her wand. Again, it's an adjacent attack weapon, and it gets to roll a white die when attacking. And of course, you're going to use both of these when attacking. Use the weapon and your character's card die right here when you go to attack. So now those are my two characters. I'm going to have Ridley go ahead and tell you his two characters. Oh, so the first one I want to talk about is Crossbow Dude. Now, Crossbow Dude has is rocking eight health along with four um, speed, and he he has a crossbow. And he can also roll a red die, and he has a white die here, and it's worth one coin. Mm -hmm. The crossbow has a range value of seven. Now let's take a look at my other character, the halfling. She has six health, five speed, and um, she has a catapult, and she has a red die. So here's the catapult. It has a white die, and it has a, um, it's worth one coin, and it has a range value of four. The halfling has a special power that states choose not to take any damage from an attack. I also forgot crossbow dude's special power. If you don't move on your next in your on your turn, you can have three actions instead of two. The next thing we're going to do is set up our quest. The quest we're going to be running is Fangs for the Memories. That's the prototype quest that I received for this playthrough. And as you go through the Kickstarter, you're going to be able to see all the other quests that are going to be coming out. Of course, like I said, you can also make your own quest for this game. It's really cool. The quest, and of course, I want to mention that this is a prototype for the Kickstarter. Anything is subject to change as going forward, so be aware of that. But of course, I don't think the art's going to change. It's just so awesome. All the kids did all this work on this art. Not only Cora, but also a group of Facebook kids and everybody else they know. All the different kids did all this art. It's really cool. So we're going to continue on. I'm just, <laughs> I just can't get past the art. It's really good. What we're going to do is either, we're going to play the short version of this quest. You can either play the short or long version. If you're looking for the long version of this quest, Colin over at One Stop Co-op Shop did a playthrough of this game that actually went through the entire thing. To make it short, I'm just going to be removing these tiles right here, denoted by the numbers up here. And the designer has already told me and Colin that the 
numbers up here are actually more prevalent as the art moves forward in this game. So we're going to be moving these four tiles to create our quest, and we're going to be adding these four tiles into four separate uh, shuffled up quest cards that we have here. These are all the different dungeon tiles that we're going to be exploring. So we're going to make them into four different stacks and then we're going to add A, B, C, and D down to these cards so that we have a completely random map. Yay. Of course we have A here, we have B here, C here, and D here. Now those letters are going to denote different things that happen in the dungeon as we play through it. So I'm going to mix all these up and we're going to have our quest ready to go. So these are the enemies that we'll be seeing throughout our quest. So there's, th for example, they each have their own th um, health bar, their own speed bar, and their dice thing, and their own range. Kind of like the characters, but not the exact same. The prologue for Fangs for the Memory is going to be read before we start the adventure. Now, every adventure that you're ever going to go on in Korra Quest is going to have a prologue and some dialogue that goes along with it. They're a really immersive way of getting people into the game. So this one starts out... Wizard Pebble Dash calls you over. He looks very worried. My gnome assistants Kevin and Annabelle went into Huda's dungeon to look for the new pets. He tells you... But it's nearly bedtime, and they are still not home. They aren't very good assistants, he says. And they never clean my spoon collection properly. But I'm quite fond of them, really, and I'd hate for them to be in any danger. Could you find them for me? I'll give you a bag of gold each if you do. You decide that you will help Wizard Pebble Dash find Kevin and Annabelle. After all, how much trouble could a couple of gnomes have gotten themselves into? We're gonna go ahead and put our starting tile down. This is the entrance to our dungeon. It even has its welcome mat. Oh, it's got a not welcome mat. <laughs> what do you think of that? That's pretty funny, That's huh? That's pretty funny. All right, so we're gonna put that right down here. And I'm gonna put my dwarf and my wizard both out on the board. And I'm gonna put my halfling and crossbow dude right here. And also my halfling's really small for some reason. He is kind of small, isn't he? Well, he is a halfling. Good point. We're now going to go ahead and start our quest. So we're going to start with the hero phase, go to the enemy phase, and then end with the countdown phase. Now during the hero phase, you can perform two actions. They're either a move action, an attack action, a search, or a swap item action. Those are ones that are actually going to cost you one of your two actions. There are free actions as well, which we can reveal dungeon tiles, use item cards, or switch weapons and armor that we actually have in our possession. Also, when you do start to perform your actions, once you start with a character, it has to perform all of its actions. Actions. Any free actions that happens during the actual action, actions of the characters can be done in the middle of them. For example, I could reveal a dungeon tile in the middle of my movement, but I can't move, attack, and continue that same move action. That's not allowed. You have to complete the actual actions you're doing. So also, you get to choose who you want to go when, which is also pretty neat in this game. So I'm actually going to start with the dwarf. He's going to go ahead and actually I've lied. I'm going to start with the wizard woman. The wizard woman is going to start and she's going to go ahead and reveal a dungeon tile from our stack of dungeon quest cards that we have. So she's going to go ahead and reveal the one right in front of her. So she has found Oh, look at this one. It's going to go ahead and be placed right here. Now, when you place dungeon tiles, you can't place them off to the side or anything. They have to be placed exactly how they are. And you can't place them so that you can't move onto the tile. You have to be able to move onto that tile. I'm going to go ahead and place it in this direction. There's some things on the card we have to do. The first thing is we have to put down a treasure token. And we're going to be able to go ahead and search that treasure with one of our actions if we wish to. Also, we have to put down the enemies that are shown on the card. Now, of course, each of our enemies have different symbols up on top of here. And as we go through this dungeon, we're going to see these different symbols on the map, and that's going to show what enemies are out there. For example, we have found two orcs. You worried about orcs? Ah, uh, no. All right, we're going to go ahead and put <laughs> these out and get them all set to go. So one orc's going to go there, and you can go ahead and put the other orc right there. Roar, I'm an orc. He's roaring orc. That's awesome. <laughs> and now, of course, that was a free action for her, so she still has two actions to perform. And I don't see why we don't go ahead and take out these orcs, right? Yeah, we should take them out. All right. I'm going to use my wizard woman, who is rocking a red dice and a white dice, and she can attack anything that is adjacent to her with a range of one. This orc is at a range of one, so I'm going to take a red and white die, and we're going to roll these up and see how we do. Of course, we're looking for hits, and we're going to hopefully try to take this guy out. We need to do three damage in order to take out this Ooh. orc, so let's see if we can do it. 
we're going to go ahead and attack this orc. And he has three health. Now, I'm going to be using my wand, which is going to give me a white die, and then she gets an innate red die. So we're going to roll these up and hopefully hit this orc. Oh, we got him with two hits. That's fantastic. So we're going to go ahead and put these two tokens on his card. We're actually going to go under the character, but for now, I'm just going to put them right up here. And we get to do an attack again. I'm going to take my second action, roll them up. Oh, we missed. That's terrible, but that's okay. We were able to do two damage, so let's go ahead and go back to the board. Doing two damage means these are going to go under the standee. It just makes things so much cleaner on the board. They don't have to put them next to each other. It works so well. You can just stick them right underneath. The next thing I have to do is Wizard Woman actually failed an attack. If you ever fail an attack, you get to become determined, which is on the back of your card. So now, if you notice, her attack value has gone from a red to a red and a white. Now she gets to stay determined until she's able to damage an enemy. Then she'll flip back over to her normal side. So this is where she is right now. Also, since she ended her turn, I'm going to turn her sideways to indicate that I've successfully finished her turn. This is important because when you don't know exactly who's going to go when, you have to make sure you keep your character characters in order so that you don't do things twice with the same character, which I know I probably would do. Well, I'm going to move Crossbow Dude to get um, line of sight on the orc, so let's move him, and now we are going to attack him. Die for my character and a white die for my crossbow, so let's roll. We got two hits, so he is dead. So we're going to remove the orc from the board, and we're going to go ahead and go into our crossbow dude's second turn. He's actually already performed two actions. I forgot that he moved over here. <laughs> Ridley moved it, but I didn't even remember it. So this guy has done his two actions. We have gone ahead and finished with crossbow dude, so we're going to go ahead and tilt him to show that he's finished his turn. The next person that's gonna go is gonna be our dwarf, and he actually has a special power that's pretty cool. He can move and attack for just one action. So he is gonna move, which is speed value is three, and when you move in this game, you can move orthogonally, and you can also move diagonally. So he's gonna go ahead and move one, two right up to here and you can stand on treasure chests that's totally fine the only thing you can't stand on obviously is enemies and your fellow heroes and you can also move through heroes freely but of course not being able to stop on their square i'm going to go ahead now since i use this move and attack i'm going to attack that orc with a white and red die and see if we're able to take him out i did no damage that's terrible so we're going to go ahead and make him determined and so for his second action because of course his first action was a move and attack his second action is going to go ahead and we're going to try to attack that orc again. Let's see how we do. Oh, wow. I only got one hit on him. <laughs> That's pretty terrible. All right, we're hopefully going to think, uh, I don't know. I hope that halfling can take him out. What do you think? Now, since I did actually wound him, I do have to flip over to my non-determined side and that is going to be the end of his turn and now it's going to be our halfling's turn. My halfling's going to be going next and he is going to rock that orc with a red and a white die so let's see if he can do it and he got one hit so the orc is not dead but he got one hit point for my second action i'm going to attack that orc again and i got two hits so he's dead so we're gonna remove him from the board that's gonna complete the halfling's turn so we're gonna turn her a card we're gonna move into the enemy phase, but there aren't any enemies on the board. So the next one is the countdown phase. Now this is how we're gonna measure our countdown. We're gonna go ahead and put a threat token on there, which I'm gonna represent by giant spiders. If these giant spiders ever make it off this card, they're gonna appear on our map at tiles and we're gonna to have to try to deal with them. Now what this represents is if we did not actually explore in the dungeon that turn, this marker will go down and get closer to being able to come onto the board. Since we did reveal at least one dungeon tile, we're not gonna be moving this token down during the countdown phase. I'm also going to go ahead and add my dwarf's token here because when you use your special ability it shows on the card that you have to go ahead and put it onto the countdown marker turn card here and every turn we're going to drop that down. Once this leaves the card again we can use that special ability so you can't keep using them over and over. This is the end of this part of the countdown phase. The other parts of the countdown phase is we are going to go ahead and return all of our characters to their starting positions so that they're ready to go. And then we're going to be moving into our hero's phase. My halfling is moving first and she is going to go into this room. So let's see where she goes. And of course, great artwork. And there's nothing in it, really. 
All right, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this card. Now, this actually is, Ridley is correct, there's nothing in it, but it has the letter A up in the corner. So this is one of our quest tiles. So this is going to have something to do with the actual game inside this. And of course, peering into another room is a free action, so our halfling still does have two actions. Let's go ahead and see what A reveals. We have found quest card A a clue. Read this when quest card A is played from the dungeon deck, which we just did. You find an abandoned gnome-sized backpack on the floor. You recognize it as b belong to Annabelle. In the backpack are three books. A Spotter Guide to Vipers by Serpent. Pretty good. Oh, Serpent. He sounds like a snake. Reptile Keeping for Fun and Profit by William Snakespear. Oh, it's a snake. And Cobra Catching. Oh, yeah, it's a snake. <laughs> by David Hisselhoff. Okay, yeah, that's a snake's name. There is also a bottle of liquid labeled in case of snake bites. The hero who uncovered the dungeon card takes the antidote card from the special items deck. They do not need to be standing on the dungeon card to take the antidote card. So Ridley's character of the halfling now has this antidote card, which is worth three gold. It says right here, you're immune to poison if you were poisoned before you took the potion. You take no further damage from poison. So no longer is Ridley gonna be poisoned. Poison is a status effect that if it actually happens to you, you're gonna be taking one damage each turn, which is not good. So he's safe from that and we're gonna move on. So that was a free action. So I still have two actions left. So my first action is gonna be a f move. So I'm gonna move diagonal one, two, and then we're gonna move into that, whatever this room is. So let's see. Of course, you have to keep in mind the great artwork. And it's nothing, again, besides a cobweb. Oh, so I still have three moves left. So let's go one, two, three, and we are gonna see what's in this room now because maybe it will be the main boss. All right, so of course, you always have to check out this good artwork, but it's a chest. We have a chest and bad guys, oh no. So this is the symbol for the goblin archer. So we're gonna set him down right there and there's two of them. Oh no, what are we gonna do? Well, my guy's gonna destroy them. It also looks like there's a chest in this room, which maybe might be useful. For this, my second action, I am going to attack one of those goblins. So let's attack them. I got two hits and they only have one health. So I forgot to say which one we're attacking. So we're just gonna pick that one for, because why not? So that's the end of my turn. So now he has to flip sideways, sadly, but that's okay. We did a really good turn. I'm gonna go next. I'm gonna use our wizard. I'm gonna try to hopefully help out our halfling character here. I'm gonna look into this room. So we're gonna go ahead and see what is there. We have found, oh no, that doesn't look any good. We're gonna, oh, it is B. So we're gonna go ahead and read inside of our journal what B is. Quest card B, it's a trap! <laughs> that was pretty good, Ridley. Oh, okay, we're gonna go ahead and read when this card B is played from a dungeon deck. It says here, suddenly the floor gives way and a trap door opens up under your feet. Beneath you is a deep pit, and its bottom is filled with sharp spikes. As you scramble to stop yourself falling in, you notice that wedged into its hinges of the trap door is a little red hat like the one Kevin often wears. You hope he's okay. The hero who revealed the dungeon card, even if they're not standing on it, rolls a red die. If the roll is a success, they avoid the trap. If they don't roll a success, they fall into the trap and take two wounds before climbing out. This corridor can now be used like normal and no further traps will trigger here. Well, at least I can walk on it, but first I have to see if I actually fell into it. Let's hope our wizard woman doesn't fall into a trap. Oh, okay, I rolled a success. So she was able to avoid the trap, that's awesome. Now, of course, I can use this tile as a normal tile here. Oh, look, they even have the hat in there. Oh, that's really cool. I like how they have the things that are part of the quest actually on the cards, that's really cool. Since I can still use this as part of my actions now, I'm gonna go ahead and move down this corridor. One, two, three, and she has four speed, so she again is gonna look into the next tile and see what we have found. 
Oh, we found a whole bunch of enemies, Ridley. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. Here we go. There's I'm going to go ahead and enemies. put this. Yeah, I know. We got a lot of them out there, and we got even more. I'm going to put this just like this. You know, I was coming to try to save you. We're going to put this right here. This, and I'm going to put out the two characters that go with these things. The first one, of course, we've seen before. That is our orc. He's going to be on that symbol right there. Hey, it looks We're, like it's a new one. <laughs> it does look like a new one. Let's check and see what that one is. Oh, it looks like it's a goblin. Now, this goblin has two health and moves three. Our orc, of course, oh. has three and three. So he's a little bit worse than the orc, but that's okay. We're going to put that goblin right there. Now, of course, I still have one more movement, so I'm going to move right here, and then we're going to go ahead and attack these orcs. Wizard Woman has her second action to do, and she's actually going to go ahead and attack that orc, and she's going to use probably her special power. I want to go ahead and clarify how this works. I did get to contact the creator, and he was able to clarify for me, and it's going to be absolutely amazing. One hit damages two adjacent enemies equally. He, this needs a little bit of clarification, he said, and so I'm going to explain to what, exactly how this works. When you go ahead and make your attack, you can choose after the attack dice were rolled if you want to actually have this power go off. And when it goes off, it's going to do the damage equal to the entire roll you do. So I have put ourselves in a great position to hopefully take advantage of this power. I hope I get a good roll with these dice. And since she's determined, of course, I'm gonna be able to roll an extra white dice. Let's roll those dice and see how we do. We got a total of two hits. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate her special power, like I said. And we're gonna put this up here on this card so it notes that I've used my special power. And I get to do two damage to both of these enemies. So we're gonna take two wounds and put them under the orc. And the two wounds are gonna kill off the goblin because he only has two health. So she was able to defeat that one as well. Wow, what a great power. With her attack actually doing damage, we're gonna turn her back like this. And of course, we're gonna go ahead and put her sideways, indicating that we are done with her turn. We're gonna move on to our next fighter, which I believe is gonna be our dwarf, because Ridley really wants me to pick up this chest. Yes, so, <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and use an action to pick up the chest. I'm gonna search the chest and see what we found. Now the chest deck is right here, it's a treasure deck. We're gonna give it a truffle shuffle at the beginning of the game, and then it's gonna sit out on the side of the board. And whenever you go ahead and look into a chest, you draw the top card. And of course, there's treasure, and there could also be traps in here. Let's see what we found. We have found a cutlass. Ridley, check this card out. I get, to use... <laughs> I get to use two white dice when I make an attack. A sword? It's a good sword. So I'm going to go ahead and probably equip that as opposed to my axe, which only does one damage. So that dwarf has gotten an upgrade Bi for axe. sure. Yeah, by axe is right. And we're going to move now with our dwarf as well. He can move a total of three spaces. One, two, three. He's going to move right over there, hopefully trying to help out our halfling the best we can. Having opened the chest and moving, that's going to be his two actions. We're going to go ahead and turn his card and move into Crossbow Dude's turn. Ridley, what are you going to do with him? I'm going to move my Crossbow Dude over here so that he next round she, he can help out her to defeat the um, orc. So let's move him. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. So that was his action, and now we have to flip him sideways. We're gonna move into the enemy turn now, and they're gonna go ahead and attack us. Now our enemies get two actions just like we do, and their goal is to do as many attacks on us as possible. So our orc is adjacent to our wizard woman, so he's gonna get two attacks on her. And our goblin archer here is also gonna go ahead and attack somebody. Let's go ahead and show how that works. The orc is adjacent to Wizard Woman, so he, of course, like I said, is going to attack her. Now, if we had another character adjacent to him, he, we could choose who he wants to attack when he wants to attack. So I could actually have had him attack her with one attack and her with the other attack if I wanted to. But sadly, that's not what's happening here. She's going to get beat up by this orc. So he's going to roll two red dice and see how it goes. He hit her. Oh, wow, two damaged her. That's absolutely terrible. We're going to go ahead and put these two tokens on her card. She's down to six life already. He's going to go ahead and attack her again with his two red dice. And he missed that time, so that's great. Now, of course, our enemies don't become determined. They just stay the way they are. They don't become determined like we do. Now we're going to go ahead and move into our goblin archer's turn. Uh-oh. <laughs> Yeah, I know, this is going to be kind of bad, because check this out. He's going to go ahead and move and target a person he can. He, of course, has eight range, which is ridiculous, so he can shoot anybody he wants to. But he's going to shoot the closest person. And our halfling is one, two, three. And my wizard woman is only two. And, of course, our crossbow dude is also one, two, three away. So this goblin archer is going to go ahead and attack wizard woman again, rolling one red die. Let's see how she does. Oh, no, another hit. So we're going to go ahead and place a three marker on top of her card, signifying that she is down to five health. Now, one of the lose conditions to this game is if you lose two characters. If you lose one, you continue continues the game. But if you lose two, that's game over, and you got to start again. 
We'll move into the countdown phase next. First thing, of course, we're going to turn all of our characters back to their ready positions. Then we're going to go ahead and move our character countdowns off. Now, of course, our dwarves has come off the board, so he can use his special power again. Our wizard woman still has to wait before she can do it again. Then, of course, we're going to move our large threat marker, but we don't have to because we did explore a tile, so it's going to stay right there. No spiders on the map yet. With that completed, we're going to go into our hero's turn. Our first character we're going to use is Crossbow Dude, and his action is going to be attacking the um, Goblin Archer. I'm going to roll him up, and we're going to see what we're going to do. And he got one hit! So um, he only has one health, and we're going to remove him from the board. For my second action, we are now going to attack the Orc. Here's my dice. And he hit two! I think he's dead? That is correct. Yes. He takes his second, third and fourth wound, actually, and we're also going to remove the orc from the board. Now that Crossbow Dudes turns over, we're going to turn him sideways. Wizard Woman is going to go next. She's going to go ahead first and take a move action. She's going to go one, two, three, and she's going to go ahead and search this chest with her second action. We're going to draw the top card of our chest search card decks and see what we found. We have found a shield. I actually thought that was bad for a second because it looked like red, so I thought it was bad. <laughs> no, it's not. It's got a little gopher guy on it, and it's a shield that says if you take damage, roll two white dice. And for every success you roll, remove one wound token from the total taken. So we're going to go ahead and give this to Wizard Woman, and hopefully this will protect her in the future. Now that she is done, we're going to go ahead and turn her card to indicate that we have completed her actions and move on to the next character. Ridley says I should probably move my dwarf next, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Our dwarf has a speed of three, one, two, three. He's going to move right over here, and as a free action, he's going to go ahead and take a look at what's in the next room. So we're going to flip our card. Oh, wow, look at that. We found three oh, enemies. No. All right, we're going to put that down. I'm actually going to put it down just, actually, I'm going to put it down just like this. I'm going to put the enemies a little bit farther away from us because maybe we can get our halfling in to take some shots as well. Plus, our dwarf, of course, still has one more action left. Let's go ahead and place our enemies. And look, they're the same enemies, our orc and our gremlin archer. We're going to put the orc in his position, and we're going to put our two goblin archers over here as well. Of course, we have our, their cards right over here, so if we need to reference them, they're good to go. Our dwarf, as a free action, is going to be able to switch weapons and armor he's carrying. Right now he is using the axe. I'm going to go ahead and just flip it upside down so I know I'm not using it anymore. I'm actually going to be using that cutlass we found because it rolls two dice instead of one. For his second action, he's going to go ahead and use that special ability again where he can move and attack for just one action. And so he's going to go ahead, take his token, place it right here, and then move and attack. So it's free? It's not exactly free, but it's a whole power that allows me to do two actions instead of one. That's a great question, and it's actually super powerful. We're going to move one, two, to right here, but if I do that, I might be in the way of her. So I'm actually going to move here, one, two, three over to here. I'm only able to hit this gremlin archer, but that way we can maybe get her up to be able to attack as well. Using the cutlass, like I said, is going to give us two white dice and an extra red dice for who we are. We're going to roll them up and see what we do against the gremlin. Oh, wow! He's the worst person in the entire game. I don't know about that, <laughs> but he didn't do very well for that attack, that's for sure. So he missed the Gremlin Archer, so of course he does become determined. So if he can't hit with three right dice and a red dice next turn, I don't know what I'm going to do. That's going to be the end for our dwarf. He's going to go ahead and turn himself sideways, and the only person left is our halfling. Hopefully Ridley can help me out. So I'm going to be moving my halfling now, and I'm going to move him one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to attack that guy. Uh, my dad's got to roll two white dice. I only get to roll one and one red. And we completely failed. So sadly, our halfling did as well as our dwarf. She's going to go ahead and turn her card, and we're going to move into the enemy phase. we got three enemies that are about to pound us. Hey, Dad, does anyone else get to be determined? You're absolutely right. I totally forgot. We have to flip the card, and now we're going to turn her sideways. So she's determined in the next time she attacks. Of course, we're hoping there's a next time. Look at all those enemies. We have to attack with all three of these, and they're all actually going to be attacking this halfling. Right, we're going to start with the orc, and the orc is going to go ahead and roll two dice, and it got no hits. Yay! Now it's going to go ahead and attack again with its second action, and it only got one hit. So we're going to go ahead and have the halfling go ahead and take one damage. Now we're going to move into the gremlin archer's turn, and we're going to roll one red die as seen on their card. So we're going to roll, I'm just going to roll two red dice because they're both going to be attacking her. And let's see how this goes. Oh, she got hit for two. Uh-oh. Yeah, that, that is an uh-oh. 
we're gonna go ahead and drop her down to three health. She's taken three, she only has a max of six, so she's down to three. The final gremlin archer is gonna go ahead and attack, and it missed both of its attacks on her. So that's gonna be the end of our enemy phase. We're gonna go into our countdown phase. So we are gonna be not be moving our spider, we're gonna be moving our character tokens. So we're gonna move this one off of her, and then we're gonna be moving the dwarfs down here. And the reason we are not moving the spiders is because we did explore the room, as you can see. We're now going to go ahead and move into our player phase and ready all our cards. We did have this power and we thought about using it, but we decided not to. I can choose not to take any damage from an attack. I was really saving it for that orc and maybe next turn the orc might not be there so we maybe should have used it, but we thought we might want to save it just in case she takes a big hit. So I'm going to be moving my halfling first and we are going to be moving him out of here with one, two, three. And the reason I only move three is so we can do one, two, three, four because of the range as you can see on screen. So because she is determined, we could do two white dice and one red die instead of one red white die and one red die. And we hit by one. So that means that the goblin archer is now dead. We are now going to become undetermined and turn our character card. Wizard Woman is going to go next. She's going to use a move action, one, two, three, four, to right here. And then she's going to go ahead and attack the orc and the gremlin archer, hopefully being able to take them both out by using that super move. But first, let's see how we do in the attack. We get to roll a red and white die, and hopefully we get some hits. Oh, we got no hits. We're doing absolutely terrible. So she missed. That's the end of her action. We're going to go ahead and turn her. Now, good news is I didn't have to use my special power. Bad news is she's uh, <laughs> she missed. That's the bad news. She does get to be determined, of course. And apparently, we have the most determined party on the planet because none of them we can actually hit on their first try. We're going to go ahead next, I think, and use the dwarf. Our dwarf is super determined, and he's going to move over here and super determinedly hit this orc. Our dwarf with the cutlass gets to roll two white dice, and he's determined, so he gets a white and red dice. So he gets a ton of dice. Let's see how we do against that orc. We got the two hits we needed. Oh, no. The thing needed three. No! <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and put two tokens underneath the orc, symbolizing that we have done our two damage. Now we have a dilemma because our characters have all gone and, well, the dwarf did hit, so he's undetermined and we're going to turn him sideways. We only have crossbow dude, which is down here, that hasn't done anything. And if he doesn't explore tile, we're going to have to move this marker down one. Now that's not the end of the world, but if the marker ever moves off, I have to place a giant spider in every room, in the middle of every room, that has a cobweb. And there'd be one here, there's one there, and there's also one, it looks like, in our starting area as well. So I don't know if that's gonna be worth it. I think we might take some damage, and I might we might have to have Crossbow Dude go ahead and explore this turn. Because my dad thinks it's a good idea, we are gonna explore for a free action the next room. So let's draw a card. So here is the card. Um, it has three enemies, oh no! What could they possibly be? So there's two orcs, two, and a Grammon Archer. And we're gonna place them out on the board just like this. And Ridley and I might have a plan. So Crossbow Dude hasn't done any actions yet, but he is gonna do his super move, as you can see here. And, and it is, if you don't move on your turn, you can have three actions instead of two, which is really good. For my first action, I'm going to attack this orc. Let's roll the dice and see what happens. And we got one hit, so that's pretty good. So we're gonna put one damage underneath this orc, and now, Crossbow Dude has his second action. We're going to be attacking the same exact orc. And we did horrible! So the good news is my character gets to be determined, and we are going to, for my third action, attack the Gremlin Archer. So let's roll up our dice, our three dice. And we did two hits. I think the Gremlin Archer is definitely dead. Now we are undetermined, and we just flip my card like that. We're going to be moving into the enemy phase now, and there's a ton of them on the board. The first ones we're going to do are the two orcs down here. They're going to move and attack the closest person, which is going to be one, two, three, crossbow dude. So this one's going to move one, two, and this one's going to move one. Now moving, of course, is an action, so they only have one action left to actually attack with. So they're both only going to be able to attack crossbow dude one time. The first guy's going to roll him up, and he did nothing. Oh, what a death-defying dodge by the crossbow dude. We're going to go ahead and roll the second attack. 
Oh, apparently he dodged right into that guy's sword. He's gonna go ahead and take two damage. We're gonna place those onto his card. He's at eight, now he took two, he's down to six. Now, of course, we have this debacle up here. We're gonna go ahead and have the orc actually attack Wizard Woman. Now, Wizard Woman's already taken three damage, but she has that special shield, so hopefully she can take the damage and not actually get any damage from it. Let's go ahead and roll up the dice for that orc and see how it goes. Well, it missed, so we don't have to worry about it. Now, of course, we have the Goblin Archer. Oh, wait, it has two actions. It's gonna attack her again. Let's see how it did. Oh, this time it hit her twice, but she does have that shield. Let's see how the shield goes. The shield, well, the shield was absolutely worthless. <laughs> she took two more damage. So Wizard Woman is actually up to five damage, meaning she only has three health remaining before she's knocked out. And remember, you can lose one character in the dungeon, but you can't lose two. If you do, you lose the game. We're going to go ahead and have the gob gremlin, sorry, gremlin archer attack our dwarf. And he's going to attack him twice. So we're going to go ahead and just roll up two red dice because he has anything that's going to help him. He's going to go ahead and take one damage for that roll. And that's the end. We're going to move into our countdown phase. Moving into the countdown phase, one thing we forgot to do, of course, is put this token out there, signifying that Crossbow Dude had done his special attack. We're going to go ahead and remove this one, and our dwarf can do his if he needs to. This does not move because Crossbow Dude did explore a tile. We are going to move that down, and he'll get that back next turn. We're going to start this turn off with Wizard Woman. Ridley and I talked it over and we decided this was the best plan. She's going to go ahead and attack this orc. She is determined, so she gets to roll that extra white die. Let's see how she does against this orc. She got one hit. Well, that's going to be enough to actually kill the orc. And on top of that, we are going to use her special power. And that special power allows her to do the damage that she did to one character to an adjacent enemy as well, which is going to take out the gremlin archer as well. That was perfect. We took out two enemies with one shot. I love that special power. Having done damage, we're going to go ahead and undetermine her. And now she gets to do one more action. I think that's going to be a move action. She's going to move here and she's going to go ahead and look into the next room by drawing a tile and see what she has found. Well, she has found just a straight path on down. So she's going to go ahead and keep moving. One, two, three, and I think she moves four spaces. Four spaces to right there. Oh, actually, I think she's actually going to stop right here. Is it even worth it going in there? One, two, three, four. I think she's going to come down here. And since it's also a free action to look into this room, she's going to go ahead and do that as well. She has found another dead end. Wow, there's dead ends everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and place a chest token here, and that's the end of her activation. So we're going to go ahead and turn her card this way. At least it's better than getting nothing in that hallway. <laughs> that is true. All right, we're going to move into our next character. So I'm going to use my halfling next, and her, her first action is going to be moving one, two, three onto the chest, and she is going to m take the chest and see what is inside. So what is inside is a whole bunch of good stuff, a whole a potion and some tokens. It's a potion of healing. You can discard up to six wound tokens with it, Ridley. That's gonna be really good, especially since we can't seem to kill any of these enemies. So that's the end of our halfling's turn. She has moved and she has interacted with the chest. Now I do wanna mention that when Ridley went over and moved onto the chest, you can either move onto it or you could even get it while you're adjacent. So we're actually just gonna leave her right where she is, adjacent to that chest, so when she moves next time, she can actually get a little bit farther. Our dwarf is going to go next. He's going to see if he can save the day. He's going to move one, two, three to right here. Then he is going to activate that special power again, allowing him to move and attack one, two, three right here. And he's actually going to go after the orc that is not damaged. I think that's going to be our best plan. No, I lied. He is going to go after this one that's hurt. So we're going to go ahead and roll our dice. He gets to roll one red dice and two white dice. Let's see how he does. Oh man, he missed. He's like the, <laughs> this dwarf can't hit anything. All right, we're going to go ahead and make him determined. We have finished his turn and we're going to move into, I guess, Crossbow Dude's the only person left. So we're going to be attacking, before my Crossbow Dude dies, we're going to attack him uh, because I think it's a better idea. So we, let's roll our dice. So we got one hit. So he's two away from being dead. For my second action, I'm going to shoot him again. And we got one hit yet again. So he is one from being dead now. And we're gonna place that wound token right here. So now, of course, we're gonna be flipping my guy's card. 
We're going to move into the enemy phase, and of course, we have two orcs here. I'm just going to have them attack the people that are right next to him. So the first orc is going to attack our dwarf twice. He can't even do anything about this. He takes one wound, and let's see what he gets again. Two, three wounds. So he's taken a total of three extra wounds. He's taken a total of four. He's down to six. Now let's see what happens to the poor crossbow dude. He's going to go ahead and take a... Oh, wow, he got hit with two as well. So he's going to go ahead and take a three token, removing one of these ones. And he is down to four health. Oh, that's just terrible. We're going to go ahead and roll again and see what we get. This time it finally missed. So our orc missed the second time. Our characters are badly hurt. We're going to move into the countdown step and see how this goes. During the countdown step, Crossbow Dude gets his special power back, and these two are going to both move down one. And thanks to looking at some of the rooms, we don't have to worry about that threat token. We're going to go ahead and reset our characters. Wizard Woman, of course, has taken a total of five health already, meaning she's down to three. Our dwarf is going to re-ready himself, and he is determined. He seems to almost always be determined. He has taken four damage. He is down to six. Crossbow Dude has taken four damage. He is down to four health, and we're going to ready him. Our halfling is going to ready, and she is also three away from being dead. So our characters have taken a lot of damage. Of course, we do have this potion of healing, which she could use on herself and get rid of all her healing, her wound tokens, because it does remove up to six. Now, she could go ahead and trade this, and that actually does take an action, though, to trade this to another character. And you have to be next to them, as far as I would believe is right. Our dwarf is going to go first. We have a super plan. And of course, if it's any as good as our last plan, it's probably not going to do very well. <laughs> our last plan failed miserably. We're going to go ahead first and use the dwarf to attack this orc right here. Our dwarf, being determined and also having this cutlass, gets to roll a massive amount of dice. Oh, they don't really help him. So he's going to go ahead and attack him. Can you believe this, Ridley? <laughs> he just it's, laughs at me. That's hilarious. He's the worst dwarf ever. Well, he hasn't been doing very good. We're going to go ahead and roll the same amount of dice again and try to take out the same orc that we went after this time. Okay, we did one. That's not too bad. The only good thing about that is we did one damage. Everything else is terrible because now he's done with his turn and he's not determined anymore. So we're going to go ahead and put the one damage on this orc that we said we were attacking, really hoping we could have taken that guy out. We're going to go ahead now and move into our next character's turn. So we're going to move Crossbow Dude for the second turn, and we are just going to be um, hitting this guy first. So let's roll our dice. And we got one hit, so that guy is dead. And we're going to go ahead and do it again, I think, right, Ridley? Yep. So let's roll our dice. And we got another hit. He is dead. Wow, you do way better than that dwarf. Good job, Ridley. So now that our Crossbow Dude's turn's over, we are obviously going to flip him and put him right back in his spot. Our halfling's gonna go next and she's gonna use the swap action to give the potion to wizard woman. Here you go. And she can do this because she is adjacent to her. And now for my second turn of the halfling, we are gonna move him one, or her, one, two, three, four, five, and we are gonna explore the next dungeon tile, which is, ooh, a treasure room, but a lot of enemies are surrounding it. One thing about revealing these tiles is we're allowed to place them in any way we want to. Of course, like I said before, you can't place it so you can't actually move on to it. Ridley placed it like this. That's just fine. But you know what? I think I want it like this. Yeah, I, I think have that's... a better plan. Hmm? Yeah, I think that's a better idea. All right. We're going to put this chest down right there. And we got a goblin, which is going to be placed here. And then we have two gremlin archers. And we're going to place them both here and here. And this means it's going to be wizard woman turn. And I thought um, there was actually an orc there. But luckily, there's not. Correct. There's no orc this time. Uh, we're done. I'm done with orcs, so I don't want to see any more orcs. We're going to go ahead and move now with Wizard Woman. Yeah, orcs are bad. Yes, they are. We're going to move one, two, three, four with Wizard Woman because she has a speed value of four. She's also going to go ahead and use her Potion of Healing and heal herself six wounds, which means she's going to take the five that she has and remove them so she's not hurt at all. For her second action, she's going to go ahead and now attack this goblin. We haven't seen the goblin in a while, so we're going to go ahead and take a look. He has two health, and he rolls two white dice, and he's a melee combatant. We're gonna, he also has a move value of three. So far, the goblin's been the one we've seen the least. You're right, but maybe there's a lot of other cards in here that might actually have him on it. We're going to go ahead and roll our dice and see how we do. Oh, we only got one hit. I was hoping for two. So we've damaged our goblin by one, which is better than nothing. And now we're going to probably have to move into the enemy's turn. I think all of our characters have gone ahead and moved and have also turned their card. We forgot to show the halfling, but that's okay. <laughs> 
Our gremlin archer is going to go ahead and fire first. He uses one red die. The first gremlin archer is going to shoot at wizard woman. So we're going to go ahead and roll and see how it goes. He did get hit, but that's okay. I get to roll two white dice for my shield to see if I'm able to block it. <sighs> Wasn't able to block it. Wow. Well, she's a wizard. She's not probably too proficient in shields. She's going to take one damage, and we're going to go ahead and fire our second gremlin archer at our halfling. And our halfling is able to be hit by this because the way line of sight goes is that it goes from any corner to any corner. As long as it doesn't go through a square with another enemy, ally, or wall, you have line of sight. So this gremlin archer does have line of sight to her. He's going to go ahead and roll a red die and see how we do. He missed her. Now, of course, they both get to take another action. This one's going to attack wizard woman, and it got a hit again. Let's see if wizard woman can figure out how to use a shield. Yes, she figured out how to use her shield. She doesn't take any damage for that. The second gremlin archer is going to fire at the halfling, and it did not hit. Oh, wow, that's amazing. We're now going to go ahead and move into the goblin's turn. The goblin is going to be able to attack with two white dice. So he's going to first attack. I think we're going to have to attack wizard woman because she got fully healed with that potion. And she's going to go ahead and get hit for one. But she does get to roll two white dice to try to block it. Oh, she didn't block it again. So she's going to take another hit. She's All not right. going to shield. No, she's not. The second attack, I'm going to go ahead and have it go ahead and hit Wizard Woman again. Let's see how this goes. Oh, she got hit again for one. Let's see if she can block it. No, she can't. Why would I think she can block it? We're going to go ahead and grab a three to put on her card. She's taken three total damage now. Again, she's back down to five. We're going to move into the countdown phase and we're going to go ahead and ready all of our characters. And then we're also going to go ahead and get our two special powers back. We search the tile so we do not have to move our threat token. So we're going to start by moving our halfling. So he's going to move away from the battle, one, and then we're going to do a free action, which is explore. Here it is. It is a... Uh, like treasure bag of some sorts. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but it is one of our quest cards. This is number C. It's one of the tiles built for this quest. So let's go ahead and read what this tile holds for us. Quest card C is Annabelle. Read this when card C is played from the dungeon deck. You find Annabelle, the gnome, sitting on a pile of sacks, looking very sad. Kevin, I heard about there being a really cool snake in this dungeon that I could catch and keep as a pet. I was going to call it Slither's McBiscuit and keep it under my bed, she tells you. But when I found it, it was bigger than our dad's car. Annabelle starts to cry. It attacked us, she says. I managed to fight it off, but it captured Kevin and it took him off somewhere. I'm really worried it's going to eat him. You reassure Annabelle that you will rescue Kevin before anything bad can happen to him, then set off to find Slither's McBiscuit, the snake. Annabelle gives you a gift as thank you. The Hero 1 cover the dungeon card takes the lucky feather card from the special items deck. So Ridley has gotten both of the special items. It says you can reroll one of your dice. Wow, so she can't get poisoned and she also can reroll dice. Ridley, that's pretty good. I'm going to continue my turn and move diagonal over here. So it's here. And the next one is uh, nothing. Just a little turn thing. So I can move two more squares, so we're going to move one, two, and we're going to explore that dungeon card. And apparently, oh, it's a treasure chest. And we are going to face it right here so we can get the treasure chest right away. That's a great plan. My, I love the fact that you really love treasure, but I really like to maybe complete the dungeon. We're going to go ahead and actually turn it this way so that we actually can maybe fire at these goblins. And if we miss them, they have to at least spend one action to try to come next to us. So we're going to go ahead and place down three more goblins. We're being overrun by goblin warriors in here. Now goblins are appearing more. Yeah, now we're finally seeing the goblins. So apparently I found the goblin on a party, and we're going to go ahead now and finish off with her turn. She was started here, so she's gone one, two, three, four. She does have one more movement if you wish to move her, Ridley, or you can just stop there and attack. I'll just stop there and attack. So I'm going to be attacking this goblin right here. So let's roll our dice. And we got two hits! The best halfling ever. And we can now kill that goblin. We have now finished, used our halfling, so now we're going to turn her, and her turn is over. Our dwarf is going to go next, and he's going to move one, two to right there using his special power. So he's going to be able to move and attack this turn, so we're going to go ahead and start by attacking. We'll attack this goblin right here. I get to roll two white and a red and see how it goes. 
we got, why do I even think he's going to hit? <laughs> he's now determined yet again. The most <laughs> determined dwarf ever, like I said before. He's he, so determined. Every single time, determined, determined. He is determined, determined. He's going to use a whole bunch of dice and is determined to take out one of these goblins. Let's see if he can do it. He got two hits. That's enough to take out this goblin. He is removed from the board and he is again not determined anymore. And he is done with his turn. So we're going to turn his card. So our next character that's going to go is Crossbow Dude, and he's going to rock all three of these guys. So yeah, we're going to use his super move, and we are going to roll a whole bunch of dice. My super move is so that I can do three actions, so I can kill, I can shoot all these guys. So first one I'm going to be attacking is the Goblin Warrior. Now this is the one I really hope we can get at least one on. Okay, so let's roll these. And he did it! The Goblin Warrior is dead. That's the one I was most frightened about. The next, the second um, action, I am going to attack the, this the Gremlin Archer. We're going to roll this dice. And he did! He did kill the Gremlin Archer. For his third action, he is going to kill the next Gremlin Archer. And he did it! Wow, your archer's amazing, Ridley. We've taken <laughs> out the other Gremlin, so he actually removed all three of these He's monsters from the board. better than that dwarf. He is a little bit better than the dwarf. But don't worry, sometimes the dwarf will come through in, in a pinch, I guarantee you. You watch. So that's going to be the end of our goblin, or sorry, our crossbow dude. We're going to go ahead and turn him sideways. And we only have one character left to activate, and that's going to be Wizard Woman. Now, we have explored some tiles, so getting her to explore tile isn't the most important thing right now. I'm thinking about this treasure. What do you think, Ridley? Let's go for the treasure! All right, treasure it is. I'm going to move one two to right here and then i'm going to be adjacent still to this treasure chest so we're going to go ahead and check and see what's, what's inside in? da, 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 we have da. found a flail so this allows me to attack two squares away and it has a red die instead of a white die so i think she's probably going to be using this when it comes to her turn next time because the red dies are a little bit better than the white dies correct Moving into the enemy turn, we only have one goblin on the board. We did a great job of getting rid of most of those goblins. Basically, thanks to like crossbow dude here, three shots, three hits, way to go, Ridley. We're gonna <laughs> go ahead and see how he does. We're gonna roll two white dice against our dwarf and see if he hits. He did one damage to our dwarf, he attacks again, and he did another damage to our dwarf. So our dwarf is gonna be taking two more damage, bringing his total that he has taken up to six damage. He only has four left, so we are getting dangerously close to losing our dwarf, but that's okay. Is that be my halfling he'd be dead you're right your halfling only has three health left all right we're going to move into the countdown phase moving into the countdown step we're going to go ahead and move both of our character tokens down we explored way more than one tile this turn and we're going to go ahead and ready all of our guys our poor dwarf moving into our hero's turn we're going to start with the dwarf and i forgot to actually put the treasure token down so we're going to place that as well he's going to see if he can maybe take out this goblin we'll see how it goes we're going to roll up a two whites and a red let's see how he does in true dwarf fashion, we are going to be a super determined <laughs> dwarf. We're going to go ahead, flip his card over, and he's going to take a second attack. Let's see if he can hit that goblin. He hit him for three. Wow, he was super determined. He was able to take that goblin out, and now that he has be become de undetermined because he healed something, we're also going to go ahead and exhaust him and move into our next hero's turn. It's probably the best he's ever done so far in our games. He's, <laughs> that's the best he's ever hit. You're right. That is about the best he's done. Now, sadly, he can't move or claim this chest because he used both his actions. So I'm going to use my crossbow dude and he is going to move one, two, three, four right onto the treasure chest. We're going to remove this tile and we are going to take one from here and we got a shirt and a piece of money. It's leather armor and it says if you take damage roll a white die for every success you'll remove one wound so that's a good armor piece for him. That's going to be the end of Crossbow Dude's turn. We're going to go ahead and rotate him. We're going to move into our Wizard Woman's turn, and she's going to move one, two, three, four, and then one, two, and she's going to go ahead and explore the next tile and see what we have found. We have found, we have found like a bro. Oh, this is the last one of the quest tiles. So we're going to place it right here, and we're going to go ahead and read what D is. It looks just like a bunch of broken wood pieces. It does. Maybe it was a table at one time. Maybe we'll find out. Let's read what it says. Quest D, we found Slither's McBiscuit. Read this when card D is played from the dungeon deck. You see a huge snake coiled up in the center of the room and two gremlin archers slumped against its side. Fortunately, they are all fast asleep and so they don't see you. Clutch tightly in the center of the snake's coils, you spot Kevin, the gnome. He's 
darts frantically waving to you. Hooray, he shouts. You've come to rescue me. You try to shush Kevin, but it's too late. The snake and the gremlins wake up with a start. The snake turns its gigantic head toward you and hisses angrily. It looks like it wants to have you for its dinner. Put the snake standee in the center of the card. Also put two gremlin archer standees in two diagonal opposite corners of the card. They will all attack the heroes in the enemy phase. We're gonna place our gremlin archers out on the board right here and here, and we're gonna put their card right here. Now, Ridley, what do you got? The snake. All right, you're gonna go right in the middle of the board right there. And 15 health? He's got 15 health. We're gonna go and take a look at this card because we haven't seen it before. It says the snake gets two actions per turn. And if the snake does damage, give it give the target a poison token. Poisoned heroes take one damage at the start of every hero phase. This thing does move three if you ever want to have it move at you. And it has a range of two. And it rolls three white dice. It's going to be a pretty powerful opponent. Do you think we can take it down? I think we can do it. We can do it! All right, let's see if we can do it. Wizard Woman has two moves left. She's going to go ahead and end her action right there. Hopefully she can take some of the damage. She does have that shield that she can learn how to use it. We're going to go ahead and exhaust her card, leaving us with only the halfling left. Wizard Woman is actually not going to move there. We're actually going to move down here from right here, one, two. That's a better place because I think we're going to go ahead and have the halfling try to take out some of these in monsters that are sitting here. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think so. So we are going to move my halfling, one, two, three, and he is going to shoot the snake because we want that snake gone. Actually, I changed my mind. We we're going to attack this gremlin archer, and it was actually my idea. So, yeah, we're going to attack the gremlin archer. So we're going to roll our dice. And we got two hits. That is really good. So we're going to be removing it from the board. That's going to be the end of her turn, and that's going to be the end of our party. So we're going to move into the enemy phase, and oh, man, I'm really worried about Wizard Woman. Hopefully she knows how to use that shield as best she can. She's going to get attacked by both this gremlin archer and the snake. We're going to start with the gremlin archer. The gremlin archer will be firing one red die at her and then firing it again. So the first attack by the archer is going to hit. So let's see if she can use that shield. Oh, she didn't learn how to use the shield yet. This is killing me, I tell you. She's going to take one damage, bringing her total damage up to four and we're going to go ahead and roll the next attack. The second attack is going to go ahead and miss. That's fantastic. Now of course we are going to attack with this snake who has to roll three white dice. So the first attack against her hits with two. So she's going to be able to roll two white dice to see if she can block any of this. Oh, she didn't block any of it. She's going to take two more damage and then we're going to go ahead and attack again with that snake. Rolling the three white dice. He only hit her once this time. Maybe she can use the shield this time. Let's see how it goes. Yes, she was able to block one. Oh, Ridley, at least we got one of those blocked. She has yes. taken a total of six damage. She only has two life left and she is poisoned as well, meaning she's gonna take one damage at the start of every hero phase. Moving into the countdown phase, we're gonna go ahead and ready all of our characters, and then we're gonna go ahead and take our two special tokens off of here. Not moving that because we did explore a room which happened to have a giant snake in it. Moving into the hero phase, I'm gonna go ahead and take one damage from the poison, and then Wizard Woman is gonna go ahead and attack. And she's gonna go ahead and see if she can hit that snake. We're gonna go ahead and equip the flail, which gives us a red die. So for this attack, we'll be rolling two red dice against that big snake. Let's roll them up and see how we do. We got one hit that's gonna be okay. Actually, it's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and activate Wizard Woman's special power, allowing me to do the damage I did to the snake to an adjacent enemy as well, which will be our Gremlin Archer. We're gonna remove him from the board. And I'm gonna go ahead and place this up on our threat tracker. We did deal our snake one damage. We only have 14 more to go. She's gonna go ahead and use her second action to attack again. So we're gonna roll and see how we do. We again got one hit, that's just fine. One is better than nothing. And we're gonna move into another character's turn. Her turn is over, we're gonna go ahead and turn her card. I'm going to activate my crossbow dude's special move turn thing. And we are going to attack the snake three times. So let's roll our dice. And we hit him for nothing. And then my guy becomes determined. So we also get an extra white dice. And we got two hits this time on the snake. So we're gonna replace one of the ones with that three. So my guy becomes undetermined. And now we're gonna attack again with our crossbow. And we did one hit. 
meaning that we have took the snake from none to three, four, five damage right now. We're gonna move into our next character's turn, which is going to be the dwarf. He's gonna move one, two, activating his special power, which allows him to move and attack. So he's gonna be attacking with two white dice and one red dice. So he's gonna roll his dice up. Oh, he got nothing. He's gonna go ahead and become determined again. <laughs> it's not very much of a surprise. True. We're going to go ahead and now attack with four, three white dice and a red dice and see how it goes. This time we got three hits. Ridley, I told you he'd come through in the end. So we're going to put Yay. a three right there and he's going to go ahead and become undetermined and we're going to turn his card. I'm going to activate my halfling because you know one, two, and now we are going to attack the snake. So we're going to roll our two dice and he hit the snake for two. That is so good. Better than any dwarf could ever do. <laughs> <laughs> My dwarf got a three just a while ago. I'm going to go ahead and replace one of the ones again with a three. Bringing our total up to three, six, nine, ten. We only have to do five more damage. But now we're going into the monster's turn. And Ridley has actually told me the reason he moved the halfling is he wanted the snake to attack the halfling. He's risking it all here. This could be a pretty risky move. So we're going to go ahead and attack with our snake against the halfling, who only has three health left. So we're going to roll it up. And he got hit twice, Ridley. He's down to one health. Do you have anything that could help us? Do -do -do -do. What's that, Ridley? It's the super move. And what does that super move do? Choose not to take any damage from an attack. All right, that's fantastic. So you're going to go ahead and put that up on the tr tracker right there. And he didn't hit you at all, but he does get to attack again. Let's see what he does with the second attack. He got a total of nothing, so our thing paid off. Way to go, Ridley. We're gonna move into the countdown phase and we did not explore a tile, so this is gonna move down one. And of course, all four of our superpowers are all moving down as well. We're then gonna go ahead and turn our characters and get ready for the next turn. Moving into our hero's turn, we are gonna take one damage from the poison and that is it. Wizard woman is no more. We're gonna go ahead and lay her standee right here. She has taken eight wounds, which is enough to, de to actually knock her out. But that's okay, we are still in the game. If we lose one more person though, then we have lost. I'm going to activate my halfling to move and then attack. So we are gonna use our red die and white die. And we did one hit, not that great, but not that bad. So we're gonna place another one down here. We're at three, six, nine, 10, 11. We only have to do four more. That's the end of our halfling's turn. We're gonna go ahead and turn her card. And now who's gonna go next, Ridley? Um, I'm going to activate my crossbow dude, and he is going to just shoot the snake. So he's going to shoot the snake with his red and white die, and he hit him for one. So we're gonna go ahead and replace these with another three token, and he's at three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12. For my second attack, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Two hits! All right, that's two more. So we're at three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, only one more. Do you think our dwarf can do it? His <laughs> don't record. miss, don't miss, please. Don't, don't miss dwarf, please, anything but don't miss. All right, we're gonna try to hit with our dwarf. Of course, our crossbow dude is gonna turn his card. He is done. We're gonna go ahead and attack with our dwarf. And our dwarf is going to roll two white dice and one red dice. Let's see if he can take out the snake. Are you ready, Ridley? Yes. Come on, come on. He got two hits. Yay, he defeated the snake. He did. He was able to take down the snake. Doing two more is enough to destroy the snake. So that is it. We were able to take out the snake. Let's go ahead and read the end of the journey. If you win the quest, if the heroes defeat the snake before two heroes are defeated, then read the following. Now, we only lost Wizard Woman, so we were victorious. The snake lets go of Kevin the gnome and slithers off to hide. Annabelle rushes up to Kevin and gives him a big hug. Thank you for rescuing us, says Annabelle. We certainly won't be hunting any snakes ever again. No, agrees Kevin. The snake would have made a rubbish pet anyhow. It's too bitey. Maybe we should get a giant scorpion instead. I think I heard about one living in Gimdeath dungeons. We could try it and catch. It seems like these foolish gnomes may never learn their lesson, but at least they're safe for now. Well done, adventurers. You win the quest. Yay, high five. There we have it. We were able to defeat the big snake and take him down. We did lose one wizard woman, but that's okay. We had a fantastic time. 
This is an amazing experience. I really enjoy how this game is created. It came down to the wire, so I love the actual dice mechanics and everything is just so simple, but yet it's so much fun. The tiles and this modular dungeon are a great addition. I like how that is done. I like the placement of the character, the monsters. You never know where they're gonna exactly be, but they do have a spot that you can actually try to strategically place them so that more advantageous you'd be able to take out. I think that's really cool. And of course, I love the fact that each one of these quests has some tiles in it that are specific for the quest. That's a really cool thing. And of course, all the I'm excited to see some of the new monsters. Every monster was a little bit different, and that's really cool. So that's really that's it. That's Core Quest. Ridley, what was your favorite part about the game? I like how they put a lot of like thought and detail into the game, like the bag and the hat. Yeah, that's really true. I think that's great. They have put a lot of time, effort, and detail into this game to really create a wonderful dungeon crawling experience. I'm excited for Cora and Dan. I'm excited for this Kickstarter. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I would love to hear them. I'd love to hear all the different comments. Also, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell symbol, and you'll know what is coming next. Also, please don't forget to check out the Kickstarter. I'm gonna put a link to it in the description of this video, and as well, when the game, when the Kickstarter is going on, I'm gonna try to make sure if I see if I can put a link up here as well so you can go straight to the Kickstarter page and back this game. It's an instant back for me. Ridley and I had a fantastic time. He already told me he wants to play this quest again with a couple of the different other pre-made characters. So that's it. That's Core Quest. It's going to be on Kickstarter. Please check it out. And if you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the table.